on board here, board. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Okay, here's the whole thing. We open up to a 13 year old Zuku hanging out with Bakugo and his goons. In which, in this canon, they are friends, technically. The only thing is, Izuku is more like a. eh, a gopher or. so. a little uh, delivery boy. Someone who just does things for the whole sake of the group. You know, buying drinks, them not paying him back, always saying that heck they'll get catch him next time, all that. And this is when they're pretty much at their little makeshift island they made when they were kids. You know, in the forest, nice and secluded. When they come across a tree, first things first, they're like, okay, we've never seen that before. And Izuku just so what do you want to do? Bago being the leader, of course, he's pretty much I dare you to touch it. Because this tree is not only massive, which is why they're surprised that they never really noticed it before, but it's also eerie to a certain extent. First, Izuku's like, no, I really don't want to do it. As Izuku is constantly being egged on and pretty much mocked for being so scared via Bakugo and his cronies. To the point where Izuku's, okay, why don't you touch it? Uh, huh? If it's not that bad, why don't you touch it? Why does it have to be me? And Bakugo's pissed. Not only because Izuku's. Indirectly calling him a coward. Also, who who gave you the authority? And then he commands the other two to grab Izuku's arms and force him to place his hand on the tree. In which, as soon as he does, there is this faint glow that they instantly know as they back off, but they're all sucked in, including Bakugo, straight to the tree. When they wake up, they see that they are not in Japan anymore. Much to their surprise, this place is beautiful. It's majestic. It's like it's, there's no humans here at all. Just then, this owl appears. Bongo pretty much forces the one with wings to go. It was like, I dare you to catch it. As soon as it starts talking, they start shitting bricks. But they're like, oh wait, no, no, no. Uh, quirked animal. That, that, there it is. Yeah, that, that's the reason. What's a quirk? Huh? What? Um, what's a quirk? I'm asking. I've never heard of that. Bogo just laughing. He's like, oh, come on. You have to. Oh, wait, you must. Huh. We must be the first humans. Oh, yes. You are. It's been a while. Wait. If you're here, that means you must be the Guardians. Or you must be Guardians, of course, because there shouldn't be any other way without a Guardian being here to assist you. I say what? Yeah. As Bakugo is... Oh, yeah, yeah. It was my idea. 
Really? In that case, um... Wait. Hmm. I guess we should just get ready for your initiation. It's like, wait, 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 what is this about now? What? Though, yes, I have the praise. I mean, <laughs> I've earned it. I deserve it. What is the guardian? What are you talking about, guardian? Oh, yes, the guardian of God. Who? What's that? Hmm. The heroes. Uh, only when evil truly is about to take hold are they truly, truly needed. Their power is the stuff of legends. Their strength, speed, their intelligence, all of that. As, yeah, you can just hear the confidence boost just emanate. The, the over cockiness behavior that is starting to permeate from Bakugo as it's like, yeah. Yep, that's definitely me. Okay, so I guess it's time to get your abilities. Hmm? What, what, what do you mean? I mean, I already have just showing off his explosions. Like, oh, yes, that'll be helpful compared with, with the others. What? Wait, you're saying I'm going to get more? Ab yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I know more hero spots and definitely beyond the fact of guaranteed to me now. Okay, whatever that means. <laughs> Come on. As yes, they go to a large city in which like where did this come from? Oh yeah. You couldn't see it before because of the veil. I say what? Oh yes, we use it for protection against outsiders. In fact, to those who aren't guardians, yeah, chances are you'll forget. What? Well, forget may be a strong word. You may, you just won't remember the exact location unless someone you know, at least a guardian, just gesturing towards Bakugo, allows you to. Or you can just forget out because you just don't care that much. Go figure. And yes, you see owl people, just regular owls, hybrids, all this kind of like. It, it's pretty interesting. As Bob goes just riding this wave for as long as he can, Izuku is both intrigued yet also terrified. By this point, he does have. A multitude of notebooks. So right now he's writing, he's drawing, as everyone's just staring at them, saying, "Wait, these are not regular people. What are they doing here?" As they arrive at the center of this huge ass tree that made the one they had seen before look pretty much like a sapling. Uh, what is it now, oh, Penelope? Uh, <clears throat> well, guardians. <sighs> what about them? Come on. What? Is, well, what about them? There, there aren't any guardians. There is no darkness or enemies to fight. We're peaceful here. As then she shows the humans. They. How'd y'all get here? Because I'm your gu the guardian. At least one of them. Hmm. You don't say. Interesting. Well, there's only one way to truly know for sure. Place your hand on the tree. What tree? <sighs> this one. Oh. <laughs> Easy. As soon as Bago does, nothing happens. Okay, is that it? Other than my initiation? Nope, means you ain't no guardian. What? You see, what it's supposed to do is glow a vibrant color. Golden. 
as well as provide you with an owl egg and a sapling of your own to nurture, to grow with you as you train and mature as a guardian. That didn't happen, so you are no guardian. In fact, how did you even get here? We touched the tree, and it brought us here. <laughs> Impossible. If that were true, that means there is a guardian amongst you. As in, Bongo's crew, we just show up and say, uh, okay, man, I guess that's us. Hmm. All right. Do it. Again, nothing happens. Sticky finger, little stretchy fingers, nothing happens. As they're like, then how in the world did we get here? Then Penelope just, what about... Deku? <laughs> He's nothing special. There's no way in hell. Is yeah, the others laugh and then yeah, Izuku he laughs sadly. Yeah, there's nothing special about me. Oh, we'll be the judge of that. Touch the tree, boy. What? What? Touch the tree, boy. Just do it. If nothing happens, that just means you can go home early. Oh. Uh, okay. As Baku and the others are still laughing, as Izuku touches the tree and it glows, baby. As an owl egg and sapling emerge from it. Baku is shot as well as the boys, except Baku has a slight hint of pissed off aura coming off of him. What? Oh, I guess you are the one who truly brought them here. Well, I mean, first it was a kind of like a dare that I didn't want to do it, and they forced me to. He's like, oh, so that's what happened. Hmm. Very right, well. Use where you can go. Now we had to fully integrate you. What's that mean? Well, now that you, you have been recognized as a guardian, we must perform a ritual to pretty much bind you to your new partner. At least partners, if you go with the sapling. What? Oh, yes. You see, you've noticed the enormous amount of owls around, correct? Yeah. What about them? Well, those are regular citizens. The owls are either friends or even family members. Oh. Wait, so they're... They can all turn to human owl habit? Actually, yes, but some prefer the full owl transformation. Considering it's somewhat more freeing, despite no opposable thumbs. <laughs> oh. Huh. So am I going to be a little late? Oh. Technically, it's a even even split if, if anything it's actually quite interesting I haven't seen a guardian in a millennia but was it more of an eon it's been so long how old are you old enough well Let's get on with it. Prick your finger. Why? You need two drops of your blood. Why? One for the egg and another one for the sapling. Um. 
I'm not sure to just trust us. You made it this far. Uh, he's a good being squeamish. Is, uh, okay, do it. Like, ow! See, that wasn't so bad, that was it? Now that's one, that's two. Seeing his blood get absorbed by the egg and sapling, Izuku feels an instant connection with the unborn ally. So, he's already... Whoa. <laughs> Quite the rush, isn't it? Well, um, yeah, so what now as wings sprout from his back ripping his shirt and then his fingernails turn into that of talon like claws as then his eyes get bigger his head starts spinning his hair even starts to get more eh, wolverine or at least owl like you know his ears start to change what really surprises him is the fact that uh, given this is his first real transformation ever he starts to actually feel a beak start to form the finished product is pretty much a as you can imagine a owl human hybrid Izuku he is shocked as all hell when he sees himself. And then Bakugo just yells like, what the fuck? And then, what are you doing here? This is a sacred witch rule that you have no business being a part of. So what makes him the guardian? Circumstances. Chance. Destiny. So you're saying he's destined to save the world? Yes. The Guardians were the greatest heroes. One was able to destroy a mountain with a single swipe of what? His hand? Hand, wing, you know. If we he could also sign scream to a point where he would either kill his opponents or leave them incapacitated and deafened for quite the amount of time. As well as being able to do this. As then a small tornado forms in this old man's hand and he's from What? Oh yes, yeah, so we have a slight bit of air manipulation as a power. So that you will be able to learn, young one. Uh, what else can we... Hmm. Well, I was being uh, nocturnal hunters. You do have some, some other abilities compared... Just to uh, aid you with this. When it comes to manipulation of darkness, we can, it's just not utilized as often. At least not as much as it could be. Mm, we do have a slight control over vegetation as well. But there is something you need to know and be careful of. What? Flick. What's that? <sighs> Ghastly substance. It interferes where our gizzards. A what? But you, you don't know what? No. You have so much to learn. Well, we'll have all the time in the world once you send your friends back. Wait, how long am I gonna? Indefinitely, forever. Wh what? Yes, it is quite important that you are prepared for anything. So, you are going to stay here. Uh, but I, uh, I have a life and family and friends. Those are not your friends. 
from what you've told me about them and how they've treated you since you've gotten here, they're more like bullies or oppressors to you. They aren't true friends. But what about my mom? I'm sure she would understand. Um, excuse me, what is it? He's just a boy. I know. Luckily, he'll learn fast. At least, that is my hope. No, that's not why I meant. He's just a kid. Just let him enjoy his freedom. At least let him be able to come and go as he pleases back home. Really? Yes. It's only fair. Mm. Only fair. <sighs> Very well. He may be allowed to come and go as he pleases. But take the egg and sadling with you. They are your responsibility. If one or the other are injured, it could be very problematic. Wait, you never told me the significance of the sapling, and I mean, I get the owl, but <laughs> well, let's just say these trees—they're special. Even the one that you four came from has much more significance than you may think. In truth, anyone could truly use any of the trees to come and go here as you please. The only thing is, it would take someone, at least a guardian, to open the door. So what you're saying is, it wasn't for your friends bullying you and forcing you to place your hand upon a tree, chances are you wouldn't be here. But look for a tree and you may find your way back. Not here specifically, but Somewhere close, hopefully. Wait, is this the same for dead trees or dying? No, <laughs> that's different. Uh, those trees take you straight to the dark lands or outlands. Ugh. You do not want to go to either of those places. Truly, something not meant to exist yet. Oh well. Um, care to explain that? Once you're ready for it, I suppose. Okay, that's not ominous. Good. Oh, be gone. As uh, yes, um. Izuku and the other three, they go home. Hmm. It takes them a while to actually process what's going on. Which, but those goos actually lose their shit and start congratulating Izuku for having not a quirk, but a power and being predestined to save the world and be a great hero. They even start talking about how he could possibly be the number one hero in the future. Which obviously pisses off ones named Bakugo. They notice this, but it's like, well, <clears throat> I mean, after Bakugo, you, I mean, you, you know, if he allows you to, Bakugo is trying his best at a working smile. <laughs> yeah, good say, bastards, damn traitors. 
Listen, Dagger, don't think you... It's because you have special power. That doesn't mean you're going to be the, the number one hero. Doesn't mean you're tough shit. You're still Deku to us. Right. Hmm. Huh. But were you guys really just using me and bullying me? Huh? Is then they just the Um No uh, You're serious? You promise? Remember, Izuku's still naive as fuck. So yeah, them saying no, no, we're cool, we're we're friends, friends. Just he would never do that. Izuku believes. Bakugo still has a a chip on his shoulder. He's kind of pretty doesn't say the world. <laughs> yeah, right. Upon going home, Inko is surprised to see that Izuku not only has a bird egg and sibling, but yay, you got your powers! Wait, why is it like that? So Izuku being how he is, trusting his mom wholeheartedly, yeah, this is like, yeah, blah, 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 I'm a guardian of the Kahul, blah, 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 predestined to save the world to be one of the Greatest heroes the world has ever seen. Blah, blah, blah. She pisses out. Upon waking up, she prays and begs you to say, Please tell me you're joking. Please tell me that was a dream. Please tell me this ain't real. I can sh show you? Please. Please have this not be real. <laughs> He's a good following the advice of the old man, and he and Inko are teleported there. Oh, no, no, no. Her passing out again. Penelope showing up. I was like, wait, you're back so soon. Who's this? My mom. Oh. Is she... Don't, don't worry, I'll wake her up. Smelling salts. <laughs> okay, I had a crazy dream that... Oh, good lord, it's real. Or, this is a dream. Good night. No, mom, it's real, it's real. Please tell me you're lying. No, it's true. Please tell me you're lying. <laughs> no, what he says is the truth, Miss Midoriya. Oh my god, please. Uh, this is a lot to take in. Oh, believe me. Your son being a guardian? Who would have thought? Ah. But yes, he is destined for greatness. Huh. Really? Mm-hmm. So he's not going to do anything dangerous, is he? Define dangerous. As she just goes down the list of everything she, a mother, or at least a parent guardian, would, or their soul would actually consider to be dangerous towards their child. As. Uh, well. He's gonna go through all of that, isn't he? Yes, yes, he is. And she just goes off and says, nope, nope, no, you are not doing this. And it's final. And then he's like, wait, mom, I have to. The fate of the world could be at stake. Yes, well, this world isn't so great anyway. Damn. Uh, what was that? No, nothing. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I didn't mean to say that, but, um, um, wait, well, I wanted to be a hero, remember? Yeah. What's I got to do with anything? What do you think was going to happen to me if I was, wasn't quirkless? What? 
Oh. Uh. Shit. Slept right. I didn't think much for a rebuttal. I did I? No. No, you didn't. But this is different. This is like worldwide dangerousness. And I don't want to have to bury you. Well, you're supposed to. I know, I know. But mom, I want to do this. And it's fate that this happens. What? Seriously? Why, why are you like this? Then she remembers all those times of him watching All Might. Yeah. Yep. Yep, I dropped the ball there. I, I, sh I should have never encouraged that much freedom when it comes to the internet. This is all my fault for letting you watch all that all my crap, all this stuff on your walls, the bed covers, all the. This is all my fault. My son's gonna go to war or something, get hurt. Even worse, this is mom. Don't worry, as long as I'm trained and well versed and whatnot. There's nothing to worry about. Uh. <sighs> Famous last words. Huh? Nothing. Nothing. Can, can we go home? Please. <sighs> Please. Let's just go home. As yes. Next day is pretty much Izuku... Going back to school, in which is everyone is pretty much looking at him being all happy because, as far as the boys telling them about Izuku's new role in the universe and destiny and all that, they, they didn't, they kept their mouths shut. But seeing Izuku so happy all of a sudden is kind of like, okay, this is weird until. One of the guys actually is, why are you so happy all of a sudden? Um, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I'm allowed to. Say. Oh, uh, oh yeah, Izuku's got a, as the boy with the wings, uh, he's, um, he got his quirk. Shit, really? No way. You guys are just joking. Right? Yeah. There's no way that Deku, as yes, Izuku just shows up the wings, and everyone's like, "What? You can fly?" Yes, yes, I can. As then, yes, then he's like, "Okay, what else can you do?" It's like, "Wait, what is your quirk exactly?" It's an owl quirk. But did your dad have fire breathing and your mom a weird, weak attraction quirk? Yeah. How did the hell did it become an owl quirk? I don't know. Okay. Whatever. As then the teacher comes in and is like, Oh, I'm sorry, uh, young man, but no quirk you see. You're Midoriya? Yeah. You have a quirk? E yeah. Uh, what's wrong? Uh, <clears throat> nothing. Nothing. I'm realizing, oh my god, wait. Why is he being so nice? Wait, he doesn't realize that we've been playing favoritism all this time, does he? Oh my god, I probably, I probably got saved. <laughs> He's like, oh, thank god. As long as he doesn't realize that we've really been allowing Bako to do this, just so when he does become a hero, or go to Hero Academy, that we get the same amount of praise and easy PR thanks to him being a student from here. Oh, thank God. 
We're safe. Okay. So you think. As time is going by, it's now a 14-year-old Izuku in which, yes, he's trained now in Gahula as well as the Board of the Wings. He actually teaches Izuku how to fly. And they actually become pretty damn good friends. As well as the boy with the stretchy fingers. Though, yes, they are, they really did have to come clean to how they were treating him. That, yeah, they were just pretty much using him. And, yes, this, what they were doing was bullying. But really, really shows that Izuku forgives them downright. Is yeah, they realize like, wow, you no wonder you're a guard. You're too nice. <laughs> Thank you. But then, it's pretty much Izuku trying to like, what about Kachan? Oh. Yeah. So, about him, Dek Izuku. <sighs> here's how that. Here's how things are with him. Them explaining that yeah, Bago really just kept it around because Izuku was very agreeable. Yes, and the odds of him telling anyone about the treatment. That he's been getting at school when they're when the parents are around are slim to never yeah pretty much how Bago sees Izuku nothing more than a pet or a lap dog I mean at least the other two have quirks but Izuku he's pretty much worse come the worst cannon fodder and, uh, yeah. Izuku didn't like that. Because he actually knew Bakugo before the other two came into the mix. So, yeah. This was a pretty deep friendship for them. At least it was. So, yes. Upon learning that, yeah, Bakugo... Yeah, didn't really seem as friend, let alone treat him like one. He's never gonna call him Kachan again, at least not yet. So when Bakugo gets called by his name, yeah, he's like, what the hell happened? Yeah. Izuku explains that, yeah, I know how you really felt about me, I know truth of how you treated me he's going on and on and on and on and he realizes the way did the whole class know this did, did, did everyone was everyone in on this yeah those two Buggles former goons are pretty much like yeah everyone knew hell the teacher was in on it too really as yeah next day Izuku, he is staring daggers at everyone except those two boys. And the teacher comes in, like, okay, let's get this day over with. Feeling the menacing aura coming from Izuku, is like, yo, Midoriya, is there a problem? Yeah, you, you could say that. Him looking around. Seeing that everyone else is pretty much... <laughs> oh my god, what happened? Hey. So you knew about... Bago's treatment of me. <laughs> huh? You knew how he would bully me and bull... All that bullshit. Bago was like... Damn it. Those two... Must have told him the truth. Uh... Uh, uh, well, it it's complicated. What's so complicated 
about it. C could you explain it to me? I don't really get it. Um, well, you know, Midoriya is just... Yeah. What? Well, <clears throat> it's just uh, some students are, you, you know, above the rules. Oh, I, um, it, it's just that you want free publicity? Uh, uh huh. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you've known that a uh, Bogo wants to go to UA. So do I. So I was just wondering, like, okay, he's changed since I got my quirk. I wondered why, but it looks like cat's out of the bag, huh? Uh, um, uh, well, I, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, explain yourself wholeheartedly. What made you think it was such a good idea to condone bullying? Uh, um, well, uh, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't worry. I, I, I'm listening well. I'm listening wholeheartedly. I can't wait to hear exactly what your excuse is. I... Um... That's what I thought. As Zuku's wings sprout, I was like, wait, there's no quirk use as he flaps them. And the teacher is sent flying. He smashed right into the wall. Everyone is pretty much screaming, yelling. Bakugou's like, calm your ass down. Zuku's pissed. Like, don't tell me what to do. In a booming ass voice that sends Bakugo flying to the other side of the classroom. Him holding his ears as they are bleeding. Like, Mizuku, you can calm down now. Stretchy fingers and oh, boy with wings, pretty much. It's okay. They get the point. Uh, right. Oh yes, Izuku has grown a pair considerably. Hell, spending summers in Gahu training. One thing he hasn't done is killed something yet. <laughs> so yeah, you can just imagine that. He leaves. Everyone knows he wants to go UA. No one dares laugh at him. The teacher is pretty much shitting bricks. Izuku actually flies home, but then he stopped when he hears a lot of commotion. In which, yes, it is a sort of villain, and yes, someone is captured. One thing is, the person who is, ends up captured is... It's not Hawks. I know, I thought of it too, but no. It's actually Froppy. In which, yes, he swoops in, flaps his wings in front of everyone, saying a shockwave that destroys the sludge villain. Well, technically destroys him, disperses him, as he saves Sue. In which, she's... Uh, you can put me down now. Huh? I understand I was in trouble, with, but this is embarrassing. Him flying as he slowly descends... Everyone's like, is he an angel? And yes, by the time he would have bulked up considerably compared to how he was in canon. When All Might shows up on the scene, he scoops up what's left of the villain and is also congratulating Yuzuku for technically his first rescue and he would be a great hero one day. As yes, Yuzuku flies off and Sue pretty much awestruck and yeah that's pretty much how that goes 
Meanwhile, Izuku is pretty much training like hell. Inkahu, and though Inko used to show up with him just to keep an eye on him, seeing the type of training he has to go through, she was not going to allow that anymore if she saw what hell he had to survive. So, it's either she pretty much stopped him from coming over, or they will have to get hers like, yeah, no, you don't have to show up. Or they have to lessen the standards of training. You don't lower the training required to be something that requires force. You, seriously. Imagine if you lowered the standards for police officers or military personnel. Could you imagine? Like, say, at first you had to complete such and such push ups or pull ups and all that. Then you lower that, you make a. you lower the quality of your soldiers and police force. That makes it. Even more dangerous, not only for the people they're supposed to protect, but also the rest of the soldiers whose lives are going to be on the line, or police officers. You don't do that. If they can't, here's what you should do. If they can't fulfill the regular requirements, they shouldn't be allowed to, until they can. Hell, even in Zootopia. You know, yes, I get that's an anime movie, but still, she, well, she was able to break past that shit, being a bunny rabbit. If that isn't inspirational, I don't know what is. But yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's just ridiculous. Don't, don't do that. Don't lower your standards of soldiers and law enforcement. Just to make someone be included. <clears> that <throat> way was like, oh yeah. When it comes to the whole UA interest exam, Izuku being able to, to actually use air as weapons, he cuts through each and every one of the robots. Easy peasy. No real issues there. The only thing is, he has to make sure he doesn't accidentally kill anyone when he actually does his fury swipes. But as when Zero Point shows up, he's like, okay, it's trying to see the real fruits of my labor and coming of training. He screams at the Zero Pointer. Well, yes, he does save Oraka in this. Only thing is, Glass shatters. The zero pointer has a hole through it from where Izuku focused his voice. People who's in the immediate vicinity, their ears are bleeding. Recovery girls like just you dumbass, just smack him upside the head. Well, Oraka is both impressed, but also, what? Are you okay? What? Hold on, just, just let me, her kissing Oraka in front of Izuku, which already embarrasses her, like, I was asking if you were okay. Oh, yeah, thank you. Please don't scream like that again. I'm sorry, it was, it was in the spot in the moment, and, you know, I just, yes, my ears are ringing a little bit, but thank you for saving me. As yes, he does wait for his whole existence later, which he knows he passed. But he beats Bogo in this not only because of how proficient he's gotten in using it, but also because Bogo is pretty much in his thoughts right now. He's really had a chance to really look at himself, and when it comes to wow. I was not a good person to him at all. Realizing that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was kind of a piece of shit, aren't I? Though 
though yes, Bongo did do all these things, it, it's kind of pretty much like, wow, I didn't really see what I was doing is wrong, but looking back, what if I, what if someone did that to me, how would I feel? I mean, me on one hand, I probably would have led, but Izuku, he really thought the best of me. Huh. Yeah, this makes him feel even more shitty. What he's done to Izuku. It's much to the point where it's like... I might never be able to be his friend again, but I'm sure as hell gonna try to make this right. At least better than what I've been doing. So, Bago? Though he does have his feet on the desk, he doesn't really start a fight when it comes to Ida. Ida, seeing Izuku, is pretty much like, as you can imagine, impressed by his quirks and all the like, his stills. And, Hey, thank you. So, you, you look familiar. Really? Yeah, you look... Is, do you know Ingenium? Uh, actually, y y yes. He, he's my older brother. I thought so. Your engines! I should have known! <laughs> uh, well, yeah. How would you? Uh, well, call it a lucky guess, and I'm kind of a hero nerd. As in, both Froppy and Oraka show up. It's like, I know that messy hair anywhere. As they both approach him, Izuku immediately recognizing Froppy. And pretty much like, and not paying that much attention to Oraka. Much to her surprise, it's pretty much. Is he really ignoring me? As he is talking to Froppy, pretty much asking how she's been. I didn't know she was going to come here as well. And Froppy, being herself, she is a bit embarrassed, but also you can't really tell because her face doesn't really show it. Oraka is just. Hey, I'm here too. Oh, uh, how are your ears? Better. I can hear you. And her talking. Right. Well, is it? No, it's fine. It's just kind of rude to ignore someone. But I thought you might have been. No, it's fine. Her just walking to her desk as Izuku's. What I do? Froppy, of course, is. She women don't like being ignored. Well, they do, but not always. Uh, what? <sighs> just tell me how you know her then. Brief explanation. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, okay, I understand now. You see, she's upset that you're ignoring her because she may actually want to be your friend. The only thing is, you probably misunderstood how she felt after the entrance exam, in which, yeah, though she may have been a little irritated that you almost deafened her completely, it's pretty much the fact that she wanted to honestly talk to you wholeheartedly. But you ignoring her makes it feel like kind of like you're the asshole here. Oh. So what should I apologize? Duh. Seriously, just say sorry. Don't make a big deal out of it. As Izuku does, and Oraka, upon realizing that they technically didn't even really meet each other in the the greatest of terms or circumstances. She does understand why he would think she'd still be upset with the whole Sonic screaming thing. So, 
imagine them being pretty good friends as well as for Froppy when it comes to Bakugo Izuku acknowledges him just doesn't give a damn quirk apprehension test it's easy for Izuku because he's had a lot of good training especially considering when he uses air manipulation to shoot that ball better than Momo Oraka or anyone else can when it comes to the jumping test he actually uses his wings since he totally couldn't use them for just flying over he actually uses them as a glider beating Froppy she is a little salty but also, so oh well better luck next time I guess he doesn't get first place when it comes to the whole strength test though he is a lot stronger and he does a lot better considering his he's uh, pretty much in 100% shape and didn't have to worry about anything getting seriously injured and or broken so when it comes to that Bago isn't really mad it's just the fact that huh cool that, good job being awkward and trying to congratulate Izuku, but Izuku's like, bye Felicia. So, yes. So far, Izuku's having a pretty good time. Yeah, we good, great, great. Wonderful. When it comes to the locker rooms, Izuku already knows is like, uh, man, what are you doing? The Garden of Eden. Paradise is right there. I'm sorry to tell you this, but that's it gonna be more like your uh, ticket to paradise or hell, depending on what you've done. Hmm. Okay. Wait. Uh. Then you could help me with those special eyes of yours? What do you mean? Well, I don't want to get in trouble. And you want to be a good friend, right? What are you trying to say? You're good at drawing, aren't you? Just holding out one of his notebooks, like, how'd you get that? Out of my ways. Uh, how do I have my ways. So, if you don't mind, I'd like you to draw me some pictures. And uh, use that peephole right there as a, a telescope. No way. You think you can do it, be solid? No, I, uh, I, um, uh, uh, I can't. Oh, come on, please! Uh, tell you what, I'll ask the girls for permission. What? Yeah, I'll just ask them, would they mind if I draw them? And which... You're going to ask them for permission? <laughs> yes. That's not going to work. They're going to say no. Well, you, you never you never know that. They might be okay with it. No, they won't. No, don't kid yourself. They ain't going to lie. They ain't going to go for that. Well, I'm going to try anyway. Please don't. <laughs> Calm down, Moneta. I can't. You're going to ruin everything. Don't be such a jerk. As yes, the girls are out of the locker room and Izuku is there waiting. When he asks, he comes back with his notebook and Moneta's. I told you they would say no, you dumbass, but you just wouldn't listen. As Izuku just shows off him. His artwork 
Moneta just bows down, like, thank you, Sensei, teach me your ways. Like, no, why not? Because you were going to use them for evil. Kamenari and Siro was like, just looking through. It's like, damn. These, these, these are very well done. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, seriously, are you, if, you, if the hero thing doesn't work out, you should be an artist. Well, he's, uh, as then, he got a little look at his hero notes. Uh, huh. What? Is uh, did I draw some things? Like no, no, no. It's just. Did you write these notes about heroes and some villains they fought? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Y yeah. Okay. 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 Seriously. Never, never mind. No, the hero thing don't work. If the artist thing don't work. You should be a tactician for war or something, or hero fights in general. I mean, wow. Really? Yes. These notes are amazingly detailed, as well as easy to read and understand. Going on and on about the greatness is when Bakugo shows up. It's like, oh yeah, he. He's always been a hero nerd. Bago looks at Izuku. Izuku just turns his head, grabs his notebook, and leaves. Then looking back, he's like, what did you do?